Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and in today's video we're going to be creating a toggle switch using pure HTML and CSS. Okay, so this right here is the finished product. As we can see, we have this toggle switch. So if I click on it, it goes to on. If I, of course, click it again, it goes back to off. So it's very straightforward and easy to create this right here uh, with no JavaScript. Okay, so this actually uses a regular uh, input field with a type of checkbox behind the scenes, which means you can essentially use this right here um, in any area which you already have an existing input field with a type of checkbox. So it's going to work with traditional page form submissions or um, essentially, like I said, anything that supports an input type of checkbox. So anyway, let's go inside this tab right here and begin from scratch to, of course, create what we just saw. So back inside or inside the uh, the actual text editor, I have something like this. So we're going to work on the HTML first before moving on to the CSS. So for the HTML, we're going to need a new label element. Okay, so this one right here is going to wrap the entire solution. So inside the for attribute, we can say, for example, uh, my toggle. Okay, so this right here needs to match the ID of the eventual input type of checkbox. Okay, we're going to also have a class here. This class will be simply just toggle. Okay, so now inside here, we're going to need two elements. Okay, we're going to need the actual input type of checkbox. So I can say input with a type of checkbox inside the name attribute if you're doing a regular you know html form submission you're going to need this uh, attribute here but if not you can probably skip it in my case i'm going to skip it uh, but the id needs to match the for attribute right here so let's make this in my toggle so now whenever clicking on the actual label it is going to toggle the state of this checkbox between on and off now one thing to mention is that this checkbox right here, as we just saw, is actually not visible on the screen here. So it's going to be hidden using CSS, but it's still going to be uh, the core of our CSS only solution. But we're going to learn more about that very shortly. For now, let's have this input field with a class here of toggle underscore underscore input. Okay. So now we can apply the second element here and this element is going to be a div with a class of toggle underscore underscore fill. Okay, so this element right here is essentially everything visible, sorry, uh, visible on the screen from earlier. So this label and this input are invisible at all times, but this fill is everything we just saw. So the fill itself is essentially the background here, the gray background, which then changes to a green background. Um, this little circle is going to be a CSS pseudo element of the actual fill. So we're going to be using CSS to create this element right here and of course move it side to side. But for now, um, let's just focus on the HTML. So essentially this right here is all we need. So now let's save this and refresh and we have something like this. As we can see, the checkbox is currently visible. So uh, let's move on to the CSS. Okay, so for the CSS, uh, we can target firstly uh, the main toggle wrapper. So inside here, we're going to define a few CSS variables. Okay, so we're going to say here dash dash width is equal to 40px. So this width right here is the width of the entire input field itself. Or sorry, should I say the entire toggle switch itself. So width of 40 right here. Now, every other uh, units in terms of positioning and width is going to be based on this value right here. So with that being said, let's make a new variable called height equal to calc. We're going to say var and pass through here width, okay, uh, width divided by two. So uh, essentially here we're just halving the width for the height of the solution. For the border radius, we can say dash dash border radius. And for this, we can just use once again calc. This time we're going to halve the height. So I'm going to say var and pass through here height, um, then divide that by two. So now we have these three CSS variables for usage um, from here on. Okay, so alongside these variables, we can also apply a few normal styles. So I can say here display as inline block, and this is basically just going to ensure that 
the actual uh, solution itself, this whole toggle switch is going to uh, behave uh, as we expect, essentially just wrapping the contents inside here. We can also say cursor of pointer to give us that, that little, uh, little uh, pointer cursor um, icon. Okay, so now saving this and refreshing, we have something like this. So essentially just the same result. Um, however, um, it goes a long way for the whole solution. So uh, now we can actually focus on hiding that input field. So we can go down here, we can say uh, toggle underscore underscore input. So for the input itself, we're going to say a display of none. And that will, of course, remove what we just saw, the checkbox right there. Okay, so the label is still there. Of course, currently it does not occupy any space on the page. So let's change that right now by styling up the actual toggle fill. So back inside here, uh, we can target the toggle fill element. And for this one, uh, we're going to be using a position of relative. This right here is going to allow us to later on position the actual circle uh, correctly. Okay, we can also give a width right here of var and pass through the width as we defined earlier. Uh, the height is going to simply be, of course, var and then pass through the height. Okay, let's give it a border radius also. Uh, once again, using the variable of border uh, radius. Okay, then we can say background, make this, uh, let's just do a very light gray and a transition right here of background at 0.2 seconds. Okay, so essentially uh, we're going to be seeing how this works a bit later on, but this will uh, make it so when we toggle between on and off, the background is going to fade in and out from the gray to the green. So now saving this and refreshing, we can see what we've just created. Of course, a little pill like shape uh, with the border radius and of course the correct width and height set. Okay, so what I want to show you now is I might just go back inside here and remove the display none off the input field. That way it is then visible. Okay, so now if I save this and refresh, and click on anywhere inside the label. So as we can see, the label itself is taking up this entire square. So if I click over here, for example, we can see, of course, the checkbox gets checked and unchecked. Down here, the exact same thing. So now, let's use this power right here to toggle the background of the actual uh, uh, fill here. So back inside here, we're going to say, essentially, toggle input. Okay, so toggle input colon checked. Okay, so using the checked CSS pseudo class, we can basically just say when the input field is checked, we're going to target the toggle fill. So we're going to use here the general sibling, uh, sorry, the general sibling combinator in CSS. So uh, I believe the tilde character right there. This is basically saying on the input field right here, I want to select the sibling of toggle checked, sorry, toggle fill. So right here, this input field is of course this one right here. When it gets checked, I'm going to select the next element right here with a class of toggle fill. In this case, the next one right here is toggle fill right down here. So now with this being said, when the input field gets checked, we're going to change the background color. So I can say background and make this 009578. So now saving this and refreshing, we can see here if the input field gets checked, the background color changes. So that is the core of our solution, or at least our CSS only solution. So now let's go back inside here and just remove or place back this display none uh, to get essentially a lot closer to the final result. Okay, so the very last thing to do here is of course going to be the actual circle that slides back and forth. So like I said earlier, for that, we're going to be using a CSS pseudo element. Okay, so let's target the toggle fill. I'm going to say toggle fill uh, colon colon after. Inside here now, we can have a content of uh, nothing. So uh, for those of you who aren't too sure, colon colon after is going to create a virtual element essentially with CSS and we can style it as per normal. So this right here is going to be our circle itself. Okay, so a content of empty string is going to allow it to actually display. Uh, it's a requirement. Um, a position of absolute is going to allow us to position the fill in the top left corner. So this works in conjunction with, of course, this one right here, the relative in the parent. Okay, 
we can say top of zero and a left of zero for the top left corner a height of var and then pass through the height once again that way it's going to be a perfect square alongside a width of var dash dash height so now it's going to have the same width and height essentially just 40 px divided by 2 as we saw up here so basically 20 px okay Cool, so now we can essentially just add a few more things. So we can say background. Let's make the background of this circle to be white and a box shadow here of 0, 0, 10 px RGBA, 0, 0, 0, and then 0 0.25 for 25% opaque. Uh, uh, you know what? That's not correct. This needs to be a box shadow, my mistake. So simply just a 25% opaque box shadow. Um, we can also right here say border radius and apply the same border radius as the parent so we can say var inside here border radius so now saving this and refreshing we have something like this okay so of course the old input field is now uh, hidden um, and also of course this after pseudo element looks something like this so now of course clicking on it only the background changes so we need to simply make it slide to the right side and back to the left uh, for the final result okay so let's get back inside here now we're going to say on the toggle fill first off uh, a transition this transition is going to be transform at 0.2 seconds essentially the same duration as we used up here so we're going to use the transform property here inside a similar scenario right up here so we're going to copy this so when the input gets checked, once again, we're going to target now the uh, this sibling of toggle fill, colon, colon, after, this time, so of course the actual circle. And inside here, we can simply say transform. We're going to translate the X, so basically we're going to slide it left to right. We're going to move the X essentially just the same height. So we can say var dash dash height. So now it's going to move 20px to the right side. And of course, by using these variables, as we can see, we can simply adjust this value right here in one place to change the entire toggle, um, you know, characteristics, I guess. So now saving this and refreshing, we have our finished product. I can click on this and it moves to the right side, click away and it goes back to the left side. Okay, so like I said earlier, because this right here is a regular input field, you can of course wrap a regular form, um, you know, around uh, this actual uh, input field. So I can just go inside here and I can place the label uh, inside there and you can submit it as per normal with like an input type of submit if you want to go that route. And, uh, you know, obviously um, I understand most apps these days are probably going to do some sort of like, you know, um, you know, like a like a fetch request to post something. So, uh, you know, you might want to use this, but if you are using this form uh, traditional submission, you can, of course, or you need to have a name here of, of course, your actual input field as per standard. So it's going to work perfectly fine um, for those situations. So that is how to create a, um, a toggle switch using pure HTML and CSS. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later.